How's it going guys? I'm that socially awkward gamer you probably forgot existed otherwise known as Patty Jack. These are my top 10 favorite games of all time. Alright, before we get started, here's a disclaimer and a couple rules. So, first of all, these are my personal top 10 favorite games. I am not saying that these games are the best games ever, because they are not. Believe me, some of them are not. These are just the ones that I spent the most time playing, I have the fondest memories of. Personal reasons. Not the best games of all time, alright? They're not. I get it. Relax. Also, I'm only including one entry from each series in this list because Unfortunately, it would be dominated by certain series if I were to include everything. So, without further ado, here are my top 10 favorite games. Number 10. Space Rangers 2. Don't know what that game is? Well, you're probably not Russian. Alright, I made a video on this game a couple years ago, so I highly recommend you go check it out. I think this is an extremely underrated game. It was made by a bunch of Russians. It's... An open world, sandbox, top down, turn based space exploration, trader, warfare, simulator, text based adventure, RTS. That's a lot of stuff, right? So, the meat of the game is you flying around in your spaceship and trading or doing missions for planets and different government officials, and then fighting off these evil invading robots called the Dominators. That's all well and good, right? Until, all of a sudden, you have a bounty on your head, and then you go to jail. Alright, so time skips forward a bit, right? Wrong! When you're in jail, it starts up one of the game's many text adventures. And that allows you to, in jail, doing this text adventure that's translated from Russian, so it doesn't always work that well, but you get the gist of it. You can go and be some giant beefcake that wins arena fights. You can really like suck up to the guards if you want to, or you could go like become the smartest person in the prison. You could try to like dig a hole and break out and get back to your ship and run away. The game offers so many things to do above its basic mechanics, and that's what I think really puts it above most of these other top down space simulators because they're just flying around and trading, whereas this game. You can go down onto planets, and there's like a turn, there's not turn base, there's a regular like RTS strategy element to it as well. There's so many different things you can do in it. There's those text adventures. I mean, there's a text quest in that game where you are in a galactic pizza making competition and you have to win it. That's fantastic, is it not? And it's like all variable depending on like who the judges are. It's awesome. And I really recommend you go check that game out because it does not get all the all the love it needs to get. And there's a new version of it on Steam called Space Rangers HD A War. Part of that adds in new weapons, new factions, new story elements, patches. It's still getting content to this day. Go check it out. It's great. Number 9. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This is, to this day one of the only games I've ever done a full Let's Play of on my channel. This is not a good game. And I'm gonna clarify right now that I mean the PC version of the game rather than the PlayStation 2 version. They're actually entirely different games. This one you get to run around in Hogwarts and collect birdie bots every flavor of beans. All the voice actors are terrible, the graphics are awful, but I love it. And the reason I love it is because this was one of the first real games I ever played. Before that, I was a kid, and we get like those discs with all like the little mini little game things on them, out of like cereal boxes and stuff. My parents weren't really super into gaming or anything, and they kind of thought it would lead to my brain melting, I guess, when I was younger, and uh, that's fine, whatever. So I eventually got Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and the first time I ever played it, I threw the biggest temper tantrum ever when I couldn't get through the Rictus Emperor challenge and try to like hit all the fire crabs into the holes to like get open the doors and stuff because I didn't know how to play video games. Everything about that game, you get to run around Hogwarts, you can play Quidditch, although the first game actually had a better Quidditch match system. And it everything about it, it, it has a certain old school, not good, but not terrible charm. Everything that's bad about that game is bad in the best possible way, and I still want to go back and play it again, even today. 
Number 8. Age of Empires 2. I actually got this game from one of those little booklets we used to get in grade school that had like all the codes of things you could order, and I guess somehow Age of Empires landed under educational, so we were allowed to get it. And to be fair, I learned a lot about medieval times from those campaigns in that game. It was actually kind of great, but that was the first, like, core real game that I ever played, and boy did I suck at it. I never got to play it online, it didn't, ha didn't even have internet when I was that young, and I would just play on the easiest difficulty, get a big death match going, put in the how do you turn this on cheat to get all the cars, and then just set them up on the seasons map and have them mow down the enemy for hours and bloodlust and crazy childish rage. It was great. I loved it. I had, I bought the game again. I've been trying to play it more seriously. And as a kid, I was actually getting decently good at it by the end, but something about that game, it's just so fun to do stupid things in that game. Like, bring in all the cars, or set up watchtowers across the entire map, and just see the AI constantly send Teutonic Knights towards it and just have them instantly die. Age of Empires 2, I would consider at this point to be one of the best RTSs of all time, even if it is a very basic rock-paper-scissors mechanic. But beyond that, it's a big nostalgia hit for me, and really it defines when I really became an actual gamer. Number 7, Star Wars Battlefront 2. You know, the weird thing is I actually consider the first game to be the best one in that series, but I spent so much time in my, like, 10 to 13 year old phase playing this game with my friends, doing the split screen thing, running around in a Star Wars universe, shooting people, destroying things, blowing up spaceships. Something about that game is just like the quintessential young child game where you're in that weird transitional phase between kid and teen and all you want to do is watch things like Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and then you get to like be in that universe. I will wholeheartedly say that they are not technical good games. There's a lot of problems with them, they're very repetitive, but Battlefront 2 included the hero modes, included space battles, galactic conquests. There's a lot of content in it, even if even if it was like a bit repetitive. So much time was wasted in my childhood doing that. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Number six, Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. That's a pretty standard one, I think. So, I was into gaming by this point, but nothing really grabbed my attention in the RPG world until Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. I got it in this, I think, five pack of games, of Star Wars games that were released back in like 2005. With, when it had Battlefront, it had Jedi Knight 2, Knights of the Old Republic, and like a trial code for Star Wars Galaxies, and Republic Commando, that was the other one. I played the crap out of all of these, obviously. But Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, was the first time I really, really, really liked an RPG. I played it through multiple times as a good guy, a bad guy, a male, a female, everything. Did everything in that entire game. And it was really one of my favorite gaming experiences ever. And I'll also say it was probably one of the best Star Wars experiences ever on a story standpoint, on a gameplay standpoint, RPG standpoint. I think it's really just one of the top games of all time. And I'm extremely glad that I got to play it when I did, because I don't think it would have had a big impact on me if I played it now. Number 5, Planet Side 2. Now, there has seldom been a multiplayer game that really keeps me invested long term. Planet Side 2 was doing that before it was even released. When I was reading and seeing this game, I was like, holy crap. How awesome is this? And when the game came out, it lived up to that. Thousands of people all in the same map fighting each other and working together. I mean, my fondest memories in multiplayer are being in these platoons with other people and just defending and attacking the different bases. You know, I've met people through that game that I still talk to today. Planet Side 2, in my opinion, is one of the most solid multiplayer experiences in the history of video games. Everything that they've done with that game 
is fantastic. Whether you want to be a grunt on the ground, drive a tank, fly an air vehicle, I mean, last time I got into this game, I was just driving around a Sunderer, which is basically a giant school bus that acts as a spawn point. And then all the people in my squad were like, hey dude, awesome job, keep doing what you're doing. I was being praised for sitting in a bus. That is awesome. That game has brought community together more than any other game I've ever been a part of. Planetside 2 is, in my opinion, one of my favorite multiplayer games of all time. Number 4. Dragon Age Origins. If Knights of the Republic was my first real foray into RPGs, Dragon Age Origins solidified it, and I've been a huge fan of the genre since then. Something about the storytelling, the epicness, the characters, the old school but new school twists in it, it's great. In my opinion, it's the best out of the entire series, better than Inquisition, hell of a lot better than Dragon Age 2. I don't know what they did with that, and I'm still salty about it. Dragon Age Origins is, to me, the pinnacle of the new style and classic style melding of RPGs. Number 3, Hearthstone. Now, this one snuck up in the last couple of years. I've never been super into Blizzard games, but Hearthstone hits that CCG sweet spot for me. I was into Yu-Gi-Oh, I was a little bit into Magic. The problem with Magic, though, is if you don't know everything about Magic, you don't know how to play Magic. Hearthstone, you drop in, you learn how to play in an hour, then you're off to the races, you're doing all this crazy stupid stuff. It doesn't rely on a huge skill barrier, so I can still do stupid things and sometimes win. It's fantastic. It's, in my opinion, the perfect CCG for me personally. It's now one of my favorite games of all time. If you haven't tried it, it's again free. Go check it out right now. You are missing out if you haven't gone and done that already. Number two, Battlefield Bad Company 2. Again, I only put one entry per series on this list, and in my opinion, Battlefield Bad Company 2 is the best Battlefield game of all time. I consider putting in Battlefield 2 and 3, but really, I spent the most time on this game. In my opinion, it's got the best balancing of all of them. It's got the perfect player count, the maps are all fantastic, the weapons are great, the sound design, oh my god, the sound design in that game, I will say, is the best sound design in the history of video games. You can fight me on that if you want to, I'm gonna maintain that. Bad Company 2 has something about it that keeps me coming back. There's still people playing it today, six years later. It really just hits that multiplayer standard of excellence that I think no other game has ever come close to achieving. Maybe Planet Side 2, maybe some of the Call of Duties. If you're looking for that realism, if you're looking for a game where you can just drive around in a tank and blow things up, go get Bad Company 2, because that's the game that you're going to be getting. Alright, before we get to number one, I'm going to go through a few honorable mentions. There's actually a lot. At one point, I had over 50 games considered for this list. And finally, number one, the one that you probably should have seen coming from a mile away, that is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I have over 900 hours in this single player game. That should tell you everything you need to know. Now, here's the weird part. If I were to actually score this game on a 1 to 10 ratio, I would give it about a 7 out of 10. But, that's just on the technical aspects of the game. When I play Skyrim, I roleplay the hell out of it. I get so sucked into the world because it's one of the only RPGs that really lets you be whatever character you want to be. I can make up all the stories in my head and just have the gameplay. Doesn't really matter. It's like almost a D&D-esque type thing when I play it. Something about Skyrim just sucks me in every single time. I considered putting Oblivion into this, but Skyrim just grabbed me like no other game ever has. It's the most successful game on my channel. I've been doing a series on it for over three years now. Skyrim is my favorite game of all time. Is it the best game of all time? No, it is most certainly not. But with the help of mods and the help of a dedicated community that's still going strong to this day, 
I would say that Skyrim has a lasting value that no other game can ever replicate. At least until the next Elder Scrolls game. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite games of all time. Did any of those surprise you? I wonder if they did. Do you agree with any others? Are any of those on your list? Any other weird ones on your list that you'd like me to know about? Leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day. Please give it a like if you did enjoy it. I am Patty Jack. I will see you guys next time.